Hi folks, welcome to the iWrite Radio podcast, stroke videocast, I keep forgetting that bit. Um, FNQs today, which I have to confess I fell asleep during. So, <laughs> um, Boris is apparently in the country. Not, I dare say, that any of us are allowed to know where he is in the country. But Livingston. We do know where. Yeah, Livingston. Oh, is he, has he gone to the, the vaccination epicenter of the world? Yeah, he's gone there. But first, he had a tour around, I believe, Queen Elizabeth Hospital, which must rankle with people who have relatives in there and aren't allowed to go visit. But that's all right, because Boris is a key worker, and it's vital that he donders around there. With his tie tucked into his shirt, looking like the world's biggest Wurzel Gummidge, sorry, the world's fattest Wurzel Gummidge impersonator. Mm. Well, is he up here infecting the population? You know. Aye. Uh, right, lads, calm down. Don't use up all the jokes yet. Um, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna quiz Jimmy. We can't go around in time to a chair and torture him. So we're gonna <laughs> question him on Zoom about his idea of closing down Parliament. Um. And I've completely forgotten everything else, but I'm sure you'll remind me. Mm -hmm. FMQs today. Mm. Jimmy, you have first pop. Well, I'm not surprised you fell asleep, mate. It was a bit of a snore fest. Um, Ruth and Jackie Bailey and, to a lesser extent, Wee Willie Fudley went on vaccinations. And they're really quite annoyed because the Scottish government are meeting their targets and probably look like exceeding some of their targets. So they basically had a, a, a chunter about it, how much better England is than Scotland, because as representatives of Engl English parties, that's their job in Hollywood, to put Scots down and to big up the union. But it was dull, mate. It was nonsense. It was crap. You had Ruth banging on about GPs wanting to order stuff for, direct for the vaccine suppliers rather than the system we have in operation. And frankly, I like doctors, they're useful people, but I wouldn't trust them to order paper clips or elastic bands. They don't do that. There's a reason that the Scottish Health Service operates better than in any other part of the country. And that's because National Services Scotland exists to do all the wee tasks that doctors aren't very good at. Does, is, is this an attempt by the Tories in Scotland to cut out the Scottish government and the Scottish NHS. Yeah, I think it is. I think that's I think that's what they're banging on it. Just try to get on that they desperately want to introduce clinical commissioning groups like they have in England because when you've got clinical commissioning groups, mate, there's more there's more opportunity for profit. And that's good thinking, the pair of you. Day. Well done there. You get ten out of ten for that one. Well, what's new? Everything that Westminster does. And if, if you think about it, yes, there's the full backing of uh, the storm troopers there, you know, that's all quite good. It's the contempt Scotland as, and Scotland's health service will go in with the English health service um, to be privatized. No two ways yeah. about it, because you're part of Britain, that's it. I mean, and they're not interested that you're Scotland. And he's actually not coming up to Scotland. Get it into your head. He's coming up to see the colonies. That's what they always do. <laughs> right, Stuart. Pick, pick your favourite questions. Well, it was quite simple. The First Minister was delighted with today's uh, question time. Don't forget, what's our strong suit at the moment? Vaccinations. Pandemic. God, she's an expert, a world expert. It was all about that, so it went really smoothly for her. Um... Even, and then when you think about it, most of the, the rest of the questions were, you see them written on, they, they come down on the order paper. She knows what she's going to get asked for the back benchers, most of them, mm. uh, days beforehand. So, I mean, it was a doddle. Uh, the only person that broke the rules was Patrick Harvey. And he brought up, what did he say? He's worried about the transphobia message that uh, the actions of the Scottish government um, are causing. Does the First Minister have any regrets? We believe that the, the new hate crime bill, an amendment was made yesterday um, to remove a contentious part of it which apparently protected trans people. Um, I didn't 
Patrick Harvey wasn't happy, and we discovered last night that the first minister wasn't very happy. She made a special video all on her own against the advice of her advisor, she said. And she got very, it's the only thing she got passionate about today, answering Patrick Harvey's questions. So my question is, she, I'd love to see her get that passionate about independence. Yeah, you'll not, in a uh, word, you'll not make, nah, but I, I loved her unscripted video last night as she kept glancing to the script to the left of her computer. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was a nonsense. The whole thing's a nonsense. Um, frankly, the more you look at it, the more it looks like paranoia has set into Casa Morel. Um, it was a, a way to beat up or join in the pile on, on Joanna Cherry from the previous day by all the wee freak shows for YSI who are greet, blatant greeting and saying that they're going to leave the party. There's a reason you guys should stick to student politics and that's so that the rest of us don't have to listen to your pish till some of you have grown up. Which aspect huh? were, of protection were, has been removed from the legislation? Oh God, you really, Jimmy might know, I, that's a bit uh, too technical Phil, for uh, me. Phil, I mean, there's what, two... what protection? Is it uh, protection against you know, some, what kind of discrimination is that? No, no, that? no. Basically, what the story is that uh, you're not allowed to debate the protection they've got. Huh? And that's been changed. Okay. Well, it was, it, was around, it was around trans people, but there's also another amendment to the bill that tried to define trans people from the Tories, which obviously will get no support and will fall, but interestingly it introduced the terms such as transvestites and cross-dressers to a hate crime bill which as i say it'll get any support and when it go far but the whole thing's a, a nonsense mate the, the the whole furore frankly the whole thing yesterday was designed to try and take some of the heat off after craig murray unexpectedly published his um submissions to the high court yesterday which prove at, at the very least embarrassing to the First Minister and those around her. Well, as I think I commented yesterday, um, I could see there being repercussions in the courts for Craig Murray. After he, he, he apparently had the full permission of the court to publish that yesterday, mate. He I told them at the time that he was going to do it. They accepted that and then they got back to him at about six o'clock and asked him to redact a few things. And he did yeah, so. But that doesn't stop people looking at his defamation. I'm not talking about him going back to court on a, per, on a what do you call it? Oh, God, what's he up there well, for now? Well the, well, the question arises if he's submitted all that and if, he's, if it's not true, he can be done for perjury. Yeah, but he can also be taken to court for defamation. He could, but it's unlikely. It's very unlikely, given what's going on at the well, moment. Defamation, I would imagine defamation is the least as well. It's the it's last least, thing. That there's at most... least two people that I think would have fairly solid grounds to take him to court. I mean, the last thing that, I mean, you know what happens with defamation trials. It's the, the people that raise them will always regret it afterwards. It just, it just prolongs the agony. Tell you what, uh, lawyers must be making a mint during this Oh, yeah. I. Oh, I mean, yes. Absolutely. An inquiry on an inquiry on an inquiry forever and ever. And then oh, there's, talking there's about Edinburgh lawyers who are making their life money over the, over the last couple of years. You know what oh. I mean? They're going to make enough to retire early. Huh? Okay, lads. I just, um, just before we leave, I wanted to have a wee pop at Wee Willie Fudley because he started that's his. actually question. where I was moving to, Jimmy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he started his, started his questioning with a lie far as I'm concerned, because he said that England had caught up with Scotland in terms of vaccinating their care home residents. If they have, that's news to me. He quoted some report, but you know how accurate the Lib Dems are with their reports and their graphs and that. So we'll leave that hanging for a bit. Um, and had he watched Newsnight last night, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have even mentioned English care homes. They had a 33% increase in cases in care homes over the last seven days, a 152% increase over the last three weeks. Why on earth are care homes in England being slaughtered in the second wave in a way that isn't happening in the rest of the UK? 
I, I keep a really close eye on the stats for care home deaths mm -hmm. um, in Scotland, and it's running at about 39% at the moment. Yeah, it's which not is great. Six, seven percent down on what it was. But that, that's the big indicator for me, both for how, how shall I put, how well applied the rules in care, home are, care homes are, yeah. and over the next month, how effective has the vaccine been? Um, because it should go down quicker than yes, the outside but, world. For all, the for all the screaming from the press during the first wave about what was happening in care homes, they are basically not even reporting what's happening in care homes for the second wave. I've seen very few TV reports at all. Chris, we Kieran Matthews for Sky, Kieran Edwards or whatever his name is, he was never out of a care home in the first wave. Yeah. He was there every night. Um, it's all about stories, selling stories, that's all. They couldn't get two monkeys about the pundits. Well, I, I think the kind of the mainstream media silence on Scottish care homes must mean they're doing reasonably well. Mm -hmm. um, although it doesn't take much. So the I only mention of a care home, really, that over. the only <laughs> strong mention of a care home today's press uh, at FMQs was a care home in Springburn that's closing down. And what support, more, you know, what support are they going to get? Apart from that, uh, it, was uh, just, uh, it was just wrapped up in Ruth Davidson's Oh, I'd England shut, this, Scotland that. I'd shut the entirety of Springburn down with a bomb, mate. Parkhead's in the middle of Springburn, isn't it? Um, no, I, I, actually, no. <laughs> I actually think that was quite a strange question because it was asked by an SNP member, wasn't it? It was Cabbage Patch Man that asked it, wasn't it? Mason. Uh, Mason, aye. Um, and I think they've already proven the NHS how capable they are of moving in and taking over a care home. Well, they certainly did a good necessary. job on Sky, didn't they? Well, yeah, they seem to have it kind of at their fingertips. And I think one thing that's come out of the pandemic is the willingness and ability for the Scottish government to move NHS staff in to care homes that are, let's be polite, underperforming. Yes. Apparently, the, the, according to one or two MSPs, small businesses in Glasgow are not getting any support. Uh, food shops and corner shops, but uh, I was I was watching uh, Westminster earlier on, and apparently there's an ironmonger that's going out of business there. It's not getting any support. Yeah, forgive me, but corner shops and food shops shouldn't be getting much support, should they? They're open. Yeah, well, there's no food for in the city centre. Who knew? And you mean tobacconists? Perhaps. Well, my co my corner shop's doing all right. Yeah, corner shop's doing. And there's just one thing as well. See, we were talking about the vaccinations. Um, there's 27 nations looking jealously at this island. I find it hard to believe when it comes to the fact that we're ahead of it. And I've no doubt that Scotland's a bit more of a head than England. Did you see the bloody headlines on the English press this morning about the EU? Pressure on AstraZeneca to actually live up to the contract that they signed. E, you're not getting our vaccine. All this right-wing nonsense about that. Excuse me, AstraZeneca moved 4 million vials of vaccine from Holland to England a couple of weeks ago. Shouldn't we be quite happy to reciprocate and do the same thing the other way? Yeah. Well, we'd, uh, we'd mentioned that... Uh, <laughs> Now that there are now that Brexit is over, um, we can expect Scotland to be uh, in the line of attack. But at the moment, it's still the EU. Well, I think it's AstraZeneca's problem to sort. Yeah. Um, but I got a sneaky feeling after what Gove said, there are moves afoot to, shall we say, level the playing field. Well, the problem is. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised. Well, I mean, I mean, if supplies go to the EU. Ah, well, Jimmy is right, but the, the point is that the the Pfizer vaccine, most of that's manufactured in the EU, and we're also that's part of the plan to, to you know. So, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> but one of the main problems is right, even with the factories in Belgium and that, is that Britain 
Funny enough, I actually got him for once, first, three months before any EU country and put their order in. So, um, and well, that, what, what, and, and Jim, that, why do you sound, you're beginning to sound like a British nationalist. No, I'm just stating facts. I mean, you, you, you can do what the Brit Nats want, Stuart, if you like, and lie. But if we're actually doing better at something, and it wouldn't have been deliberate, it would be an accident that we're doing it better. I find, right. that, I find it objectionable, the, the, the crowing about the vaccination programme, even though it affects me personally. I don't. No. I don't. I think the UK government had to, had to do it. Um, um, the, for once, they made the right the right decision. Yeah, but they're using well, it like them. a shield to, they took to, a huge, to deny the, the responsibility uh, for 100,000 sure. deaths. They, they took a huge risk with the money they put into various vaccines um, and they committed earlier. So I'm sorry, I think that they did a good thing for once. Well, it, okay, and and remember, the EU that. still hasn't okayed it for distribution. Can I just say something as well? If you've got to tell a lie because you won't tell the truth from somebody of another ethnicity, I think they call that racism. If well, the English have done something, the, they've done something. There's another, arg there's another argument to come, remember. Mm. They were successful with two, possibly three of the vaccines with their investment in them. But yeah. there's going to be a dozen that oh, yeah. never, ever work, that failed. And when they start talking about the money that was spent on ordering them... Oh, no, hear about that. You're not going to well, hear about you that. Well, you will eventually, Jimmy. But yeah, I, think, I think we'll find that a lot of countries took risks that didn't pay off for them. Yeah. I need yeah, to apologise. The, the, for... the simple line on this one, if AstraZeneca signed a contract for 300 million euros with the European Union, our government should be pressurising AstraZeneca to live up to the terms of that contract. They shouldn't be saying... Oh, by the way, screw over the European Union if you want, as long as we get weighed in with what we order. Aye. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. By the way, yeah. that report that I mentioned the other day about 8% uh, effectiveness of the AstraZeneca vaccine, this report supposedly came out of Israel. It was reported in the German press. It was reported in the German press. And German, and generally speaking, the German press is fairly accurate. It was completely false. False. Right. Yeah. It but was it, the percentage of over 65 said that had been vaccinated. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not the efficacy of the, uh, no. the drug. <laughs> imagine, imagine, the, imagine the Israelis getting something wrong. Perish the thought that that would ever happen. No, I well, think it was the German press, apparently, they got it wrong. Normally, they just send in Mossad to sort out those mistakes, don't they? Well, no, Mossad, well, they're sorting out the mistakes in the Labour Party membership, Mossad, at the moment, yeah. Aye, um, they're, they're, they're busy with the stormtroopers. Yeah, but we're forgetting one thing, right? We're sitting here, oh, I, the vaccine, and they're not doing it, and they're a bit late. Now I'm getting my first shot in two weeks. It's people on this planet. Hundreds of millions, probably billions, that aren't going to get one till next year, if they're lucky. 2022, uh, while us privileged white folk Westerners sit there going, oh, how, how inconvenient. And you can't open the borders until the whole world is, is, is vaccinated. Yeah. By, the, by the way, just because you're English white, then he class us three poor Scots colonialists for yourselves. Western, Westerners, Europeans, right. marauding barbarians to the rest of the world. Talk, talking about colonialists, um, Boris Johnson's been kind enough to come and see us. Hey. Up in Scot Scotland Shire. Yes. Um, everything I've read is really weird. Incompetent has to be added to the list of too poor, too wee, too stupid. Um, because he seems to be coming up to check that our NHS and our vaccine rollout is doing as well as England. That seems to be the reasoning behind it. Well, apparently uh, the Labour Party leader, Keir Starmer, Starmer is all in favour of him coming. He's entitled to come to Scotland, apparently, even though there is a pandemic going. Yeah. Well, surprise, surprise with Starmer. Uh, I, I mean, sorry, when you see... <laughs> 
Johnson walking past. He's he's not that far behind, nodding, nodding along with him. Uh, I mean, yep, yeah, now officially, you know, Glaber believes in rape, torture, murder by security services. But the police can actually, you know, have a murder if it's going to help them. Uh, and they're not, well, they didn't vote against it. They abstained, which is totally cowardly. You know, in other words, they went and hid under their seats, you know. That was my that was my clickbait word. As soon as I mentioned Stammer, I knew Phil would get going. Ah. <laughs> right, <clears throat> Jimmy. Well, you, good night, it, Boris coming north. Ah, isn't it nice? Um, as I say, he's been to, been to the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital. He's heading off to Livingston to see a vaccine manufacturing plant. So I think he must be coming into Edinburgh as well because I, they had James Matthews on live on Sky uh, not that long ago and uh, it flagged up he was in Edinburgh. I was trying to figure out where he was exactly. So if James Matthews is in Edinburgh, not at Livingston, he, he, almost certainly Boris will be coming into, the, into Edinburgh. I, I thought his flight to Glasgow would probably hop over to Edinburgh because if he's, if he's in Livingston, it's a hell of a lot quicker to go to Edinburgh Airport than it is to go back to Glasgow, isn't it? Oh, and he's not going to want to stay in Scotland for long. Let's well, be honest, been known to be to... here for a few hours and bowl again. Oh, it, be ha it has been known for them to use RAF airports as well, of course. Well, he did. He, he flew to Northolt this morning. Oh, that's, normal. Northolt. that's normal for the government, isn't it? Is it? Is it truly reasonable to complain about him coming up? I mean, I think it's a, it's a bonus. It's every time he comes, it's more votes for independence. So I keep can't, coming. I he can't help putting his foot in his mouth. He oh, can't help you? appearing as what he is. The, the look on your village. face when I asked that question, Phil. Oh, I mean, at the end of the day, should he come up here? Okay, he's the English Prime Minister. There's no two ways about that. Might be the Prime Minister of the UK as well. But what percentage of the vote did Tories get up here? Uh, the majority of people so far want independence. So, no, he should come. He shouldn't. He should just bugger off back and stay down there. And, you know? Maybe he's coming up here to actually find out how an NHS. Maybe he's coming up here to to ask serious questions and find out how an NHS actually works. That'll be first. <laughs> it would be a first, but you never know. Uh, no, the the reason I'm asking it is because, the, the, you know, there are two sort of thoughts on this one. There are you're not welcome, Boris, and there is the that's another half a percent on the Indy vote. Um, I find that the fact that he can't go out in public and do what Boris does well, come on, he's a good cheerleader, Boris. Mm -hmm. he, he might be an incompetent prime minister. For credit. He, he can be quite entertaining at times. Can he? So, but he needs a crowd. Oh, have you never seen him at Tory party conference? No, of course not. Why? Well, what, well you should watch him. Because he's one of the best after dinner speakers that's ever been Prime Minister. <laughs> okay, I'll tell take you one for it. He's very Honestly, good. you're you're really surprising me here. I, well, there's, I, there's I, no I, I always can... I watch the enemy, mate. There's no crowd he can go to now though, Nori. The last time he well, came up there was he went to Peter Heed Fish Market and the fishmongers were like, Boris, you're a bit of a hero because you're saving our fish the EU <laughs> and that. Now they've actually seen the reality of that. And he can't go, can't go down to the borders and deal with the farmers because he's just a bit to screw them over. So you know no I mean? hard they, hats they, or wellies. Did you see that stat for beef yesterday, Nori? I don't know, it might have got lost in amongst all the chaff that was flying up. Beef sales are at 20% of the level they were this time last January. Is this e EU imports? Beef, Sorry, beef, beef EU to the exports. EU, aye. So yeah. they, 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 have, they have lost 80% of their sales. So that's why you'll no get near the farmers. And after that, who else votes Tory? What's he going to do? Go up to Morningside and dance about in a frock. <laughs> Morningside vote Labour for Sorry, Ian Murray. Ian Murray's already doing that. Dancing Ian, around in a frock. Ian, Ian Murray is near Labour. Ian Murray's a, as big a Tory as every Tory ball bag in Scotland. Yeah, well. Look, Al Alistair Carmichael, Lib Dem MP, lying. L proven liar, Alistair Carmichael. Lib Dem mm. MP for uh, Orkney. He was complaining about Boris coming up. He was saying that uh, he won't be popular in Orkney because the last time he came up, he, he went to Orkney and he spoke to some crab fishermen and they're 
businesses going down the tubes. It, it just, it seems really strange to me that they haven't worked out. I mean, unless it's a rallying cry to the Tory party in Scotland, who are heading for a good kick in, I think, in May. Um, I don't, does, has nobody worked out that it's a disadvantage to bring Boris up here? They didn't understand. He's, he's been advised by Michael Gove, who thinks he knows Scotland, and he doesn't know Scotland. He's been advised by these people who have put together his five-point plan to save the union, <laughs> realising that the union's already finished. It's just a matter of time. See, they I, can't I'm not, save the union because Scotland has no respect for it. I'm not surprised Michael Gove is advising him to come up here, because I think Michael Gove wants his job. I so they are. I, I think, think Michael Gove. I think Michael Gove's the wrong colour to get that job. I think the next Tory leader will absolutely one hundred percent not be Caucasian. But unfortunately, Michael's still desperate to get the job, and Rupert is absolutely desperate to have Michael in number ten. Is Boris not a Turk? Yeah. Uh, he's the whitest Turk you've ever seen. That's, that, that, that's not true. Do you That's get me odds from a bookie with that? That it'll be a non-white Tory leader? Aye, right. <laughs> well, that, there's Richie Sunak, Pretty Patel. Oh, well. Pretty Patel, pretty awful. Or Evil Patel, you know, multiple names for that. Right. Pretty like, Petal. Pretty Petal, as uh, some people call her. Um, let's move on and hope Boris doesn't fall down any stairs. Uh, I'm kind of hoping after that he, the May election. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping that he falls doing an embankment right onto the M8. I'd love to see 70 mile in the traffic meeting the Prime Minister. That would be an absolute joy to me. Not but yet, Unfortunately, Jimmy. I think he'll be kept well away from the verb. Not, not yet. Not till after the May election. <laughs> It'd be nice if he mistook the toilet door on the, on the aircraft, <laughs> if he mistook the cabin door for the toilet. Mm. <laughs> Okay, guys. Um, right across Scotland, then. <laughs> let, let's move on to things independent in this stuff. Jimmy, there's been quite a furore about your comment about shutting down. Should the SNP win a landslide at Holyrood, do you think there's a possible path to a referendum? Or a yep. plebiscite, really, isn't it? Yeah. It, it, as I say, I don't think they can... I think it's too short a time scale now to make me... A plebiscite, and frankly, you're not going to get it because Nicola Sturgeon won't do it. She's got her plan, and she will stick to it, no matter how many times it's shown to her that it won't work. But after the election, should they win, and she gets her Section 30 request chucked back in her face, and has nowhere to go because her Plan B is pretty much unworkable, I say collapse the government. I say right, if you refuse to allow us any possible way to measure this, to let Scots um, exercise the right to self-determination, we're not going to work, we're going to close the Scottish Parliament. We resign as a government, at which point the opposition have 28 days to form a government, which they absolutely couldn't because the SNP would have a majority and could vote down anyone who wanted to form a government. And at that point, there must be another Scottish election. And you just go into that with a one-line manifesto. You know who we are. We just won an election. But this time, this election is a plebiscite on Scottish independence. And, after, and, and if we win, we will declare Scotland independent and open negotiations with the UK to leave, and to leave the UK and to set aside the Act of Union. Well, a good idea, bad idea. No, don't agree with it. Don't agree with it. I thought Kevin McKenna's over the last week was probably one of the best one is building up a legal case. You're getting, the UK's making itself extremely unpopular. You're getting more and more sympathy and it's world opinion will make, make it. Um, it's no good just screaming out of uh, impatience and jumping off the cliff unless you know there's something soft to land on, you know. Uh, is a good possibility of an ally in America um, when, when it comes to it. So um, there's all to win, a lot more to lose. 
you know, by just going out helter skelter. Just stick together. And, and but the main thing is, if if you're looking at evidence that you kind of get on when you've got the Scottish independence movement, I mean, you've got the people are watching that, and all they're doing at the moment is kicking ten bells out of each other for the one. He's, he's watching that. Full of uh, egotists, you know. Stuart, Every, a bad idea. Um, I've taken to the idea of plebiscite. I think um, Angus McNeil made it very simple last week, and he made it very clear. What you need for international recognition, which at the end of the day is, is, is the desire, is the road to independence in the face of a, a recalcitrant uh, UK government, is a, a legitimate uh, vote and either a referendum or a pleb an ordinary general election which with the manifesto saying that we are, this is, if you vote for us, we will take forward, you call it, it's called a plebiscitary election. It's a common route to independence and it provides legitimate uh, legitimacy for your actions afterwards because the, the you know, the voters have uh, decided. I, I have problems with it. Um, I don't like the idea of leaving a space that can be filled by the British government. Yeah. I really don't like the idea that if there's no agreement um, within 28 days that they don't storm on it, that they don't they decide they're going to they're going they they to open up they have to, they have to pass a new act of parliament to do so. Oh, right. They have to and they don't have they an 80% no, they they got... majority. No, that okay. doesn't matter. They'd have to shut the Scottish Parliament, which the Scottish people voted for in a free and fair election in 1997. Are the British government going to set that aside? The but Scotland they... Act declares there must be an election after 28 days. Well, I'm not sure that I would trust them not to pull some hanky-panky. That, what is, I, anything to delay a decision on Scottish independence is going to appeal to them. And, and, and that would worry me, to be honest. That, that would worry me. And then you're, hand, time, you're this, handing them the power then to, to just say, no, you're accepting. You're holding your hand up at that point saying, right, fine, we accept that England has the right to overrule Scotland's right of self-determination. Article um, 1 of the United Nations Charter um, does not apply Jimmy, to us because we don't have Jimmy, the courage to stand against them. Jimmy, you're not talking about UDI. They have the right, right now, they have the right at Westminster to do what they want. Well, you tell, Tom, you tell Tom Arthur that, you, uh, you know. No, I don't have to tell him. Every single person on this Zoom call knows no, they, devolution they is they, power They retained. had that right with India. They had that right with Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. The fact that they didn't exercise it should be an example to us. Right, so you're talking UDI and taking it in the streets. I don't, I'm not saying that. No, you're epic. going too far there, uh, Nori. But why, why would they, short of insurrection, why would they not do everything they could without spilling blood just to prolong it? Actually, if you close the parliament, you just decided to close the parliament, particularly now, because now, actually, and again, you have to look at the character. Well, I'm not saying doing it now. Well, if you're talking about closing the parliament, and you're, you're talking about, you won't be able to do anything like that for a year or anything else, which is why you've got to do it legally. What are you on about? Oh, the, the, the I mean, government. you're as bad as, uh, uh, as everybody else. What do you mean legally? Legally, you, you actually are simply, you're simply saying it's got to be with the permission of Westminster, aren't you? No, you're doing it in a reasonable and manner. That's a lot of it. Is well, what's the matter of having a plebiscitary general election? You put it in your manifesto, you win the election, sure, that you have work. the right. That wouldn't, that wouldn't work. The general election is about everything. It's about... It has been it's worked before. It's a, That's how it's done. In fact, yeah. it's happened more well, you often say that, than but where, a referendum. Where, where's it worked before? Where, who has had a plebiscitary general election? That's what it's the way it's been done. That's how history yeah, shows it. Doesn't it. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. As I've already said, if every single voter in Scotland believes the only thing that matters in this election in May is a vote for or against independence, yeah. what matters is the spin that Westminster put on it. 
you know, what matters is to hold up a, a, a vote by the people to the international community, because otherwise there's, you've got no, no legs. And Westminster will go to the UN or wherever and say, oh no, this was a general election. Yeah. This was about hospitals and education. I mean, they'll just, why wouldn't they? Boris Johnson is prepared to lie about just about anything. That's the problem. So what are you, you saying there's need... no, hope then? no hope at all? No, no, I, th I think it's more leverage. But, but I don't believe you could do it. Jimmy's idea of shutting down Hollywood and for a, another election that has to be about that because Westminster has ignored the majority vote um, for Hollywood the first time round has more chance of working. Well, I'm not saying I'm against what Jimmy's uh, suggesting, uh, but in fact, they could be working, to, they could be both part of the plan. I think the other thing is that when you talk about shut, shutting government down, the reality is because nobody else could form a government, the government would still be running. You know what I mean? You still have a health secretary who was in charge of the pandemic, mm -hmm. regardless of the government having resigned until I such time as another government was formed. And again, you would block any other government forming. Again, I, I worry that, I mean, they've had practice in Ireland, Northern Ireland, um, recent practice with Stone. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, would, I would worry with the mainstream media on their side. I'm really sorry for criticizing you boys. I don't really mean it. Uh, <laughs> they, they could headline it any way they wanted. Yeah, and but that, you have to remember, Stormont's never been... Government's never been close to being as effective a government oh, no. I'm, as Holyrood is. I'm, I'm Holyrood's not... had 21 years of effective government. Stormont's had what? In the entirety since uh, the Good Friday Agreement, they've spent more time arguing amongst themselves about idiot things than anything else. They're, also, they're not an effective government, hence also, the reason that you, they were shut down for three years. You raise that, that phrase, direct rule, and then you'll have, a, you'll have the people of Scotland on the streets. Hmm. You'll have half the people of Scotland on the streets. Yeah, but half the people of Scotland on the streets would be enough. Um, not a year, yeah, 200 yeah, million people them, marching. You get two quarter of a million people marching through the centre of Glasgow. What do the English do to that? I, it just worries me that they'll use it as an excuse yep. to cut the legs or cut the legs even shorter than they already have. Well, the we, know that, we know what they're planning to no, do. Ray, the, alternative, the alternative is just to gear up, to say, oh, shit, they've got an 80-seat majority, so we might as well just no bother fighting for the next four years because we're getting nothing. Have you not already seen the advertising in the press? The UK government in Scotland is advertising for bids for funds uh, from businesses and organisations in Scotland. They're already doing it. Yeah. They're already bypassing Holyrood. And why wouldn't they do more of it given the opportunity? Exactly, uh, that's what they're doing. Well, why wouldn't they do more of it given the opportunity? Yeah, well, well they don't, they've got the opportunity. Not, what are they going to do? You know? are they genu you genuinely think they could just shut Holyrood and get away with it? I don't think I don't think they would shut it. I think they would put a caretaker uh, government in, in the sense that they would have civil servants running it. What what could possibly be a caretaker government? There has the Scotland Act states that there has to be an election within twenty eight days. Do you know what it looks like? It looks like Jack sitting in New Street. That's what it looks like. What do you think New Street's there for? No, they have to go into St Andrew's House. That's where it's all run from. The Parliament is one thing, well, but the government of Scotland is run from St Andrew's House. Well, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if it was moved from St Andrew's House to New Street. Where would, where would, so what about the election? The election would have to take place. Why would Alistair Jack be even thinking? He may, can't he run his department. He certainly could run a bloody country. All you would need... No, I don't think they picked Jack to do it. Uh, All you would need to put a stop to it is the dark forces that Stuart in particular is keen on to pull the trigger on somebody, and that would give them their excuse. I'm not keen on them at all. <laughs> well, I don't think much. you'd get. I don't think you'd get that. I think they might try it, mate. But I'm sorry, we've had a hundred thousand people march through the city centre of Edinburgh without any arrests. Why on earth would we suddenly start shooting people, executing people? I'm not saying we would. 
No, exactly. So it would be seen for what it was. An act of sabotage by a desperate British Remember? government, desperate to hang on to Scottish assets and Scottish land because they'll be bloody bankrupt without us. Remember who's got the press in their pocket. That's always been a problem. I That's remember that the problem. whole world, the whole world, Norrie, has cameras in their pocket. If anything happened to any one of these marches, anywhere, and there would be mass demonstrations, but if anything happened, the footage would be on the internet way, but way much before they could control. I'm not saying it would happen released. at a march. It wouldn't need that. Joe well, Cox, it... something like that's all it would need. Oh. Any excuse? Headlines, we do not want to ulsterize Scotland, therefore the British government will come you and save you from yourselves. You can't ulsterize Scotland, mate. There aren't two well-equipped minor armies ready to go to war. And do you can, any, do you can anybody that's got a cache of weapons and explosives Jimmy, in Scotland? Jimmy, I'm not talking about reality here. I'm talking about what the spin will be. Yeah. Frankly, mate, you're talking about some... It, it reads more of, the, more of the script from a programme like Spooks than it does anything bearing any relation to reality. So, uh, I, it would worry me to give them any kind of opening to override Hollywood. It, I, I would, I, especially They're already overriding pop. Hollywood. I know, so why won't they take it further? I just think that would be why a is there a that limit on bring what everybody on the streets. You know how quickly they, they, they come out on the, to surround Holyrood when it was threatening, when they threatened to take away powers before. And uh, that was the Middle Ages and the old that turned up for that. For yeah, that uh, protest. 2,000 of them. Not 100,000. No, but it was just it overnight. Worry, it, would, it would worry me. Is that okay with you guys? Of course that <laughs> worries, worries me. I don't want to see any violence on the street. Oh, you know, and, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Just look at British history. And then pick out, well, instead of looking at the bits that were violent, make it quicker. Pick out the bits of British history where it wasn't violent, you know, when they were dealing with colonies. Because uh, that's what you are. You're a, you're a, you're a sub-base. Do you not remember the miners' strike? That's exactly what they did. Soldiers in police uniforms and everything, yeah? Uh, especially the Met. You could tell them by their shirts. You know, you know, uh, that G7 uh, uh, period when they bust all these uh, police up from England, and it was fascinating. Up to that day, that, that year, you barely saw a police transit in Scotland with a grill. Not that they haven't used them much, but you barely saw one anywhere in Scotland. And yet, all the time I would spend in England, every force in England had transits going around with these grills in front of their, their windscreens. After mm. that, uh, every uh, you know every division in Scotland had had police vans, riot vans with grills, and they and never yeah, use them. They don't need yeah. them in Scotland. And the problem the problem with getting police body armour and all kinds of kit is occasionally they think they're hard men and use it. Hence the reason Sheku Bayo was left dying in a street in bloody Dalgetty Bay. Well, okay. Anything to finish off with, guys? We should, I should have lined up that clip. There's a wonderful clip around of somebody pretend, uh, <laughs> pretending to be the Prime Minister standing at the podium, but we could show that tomorrow. Uh, It'll no, keep. Phil, anything catch your eye today? No, nothing, nothing that great. Like you said, it was boring. Oh, nobody mentioned, um, oh God, what's her name? The standing in leader is Labour. Uh, um, her daft questions, you know. Jackie yeah. Bailey. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Actually, I was almost did what you did, Norrie, and fell asleep. You know what I mean? It was. Uh, Jim, Jimmy, Jimmy spoke about. It. Can you give was me? It, a did she not ask for statistics that Nicola? Yeah, didn't she have? was asking for some pretty obscurous yeah. stuff. Just, Stats that Nicola had, had to tell her. I'll get back to you on it, bomber. But I've not got it in my book now because I'm impressed by her demeanor. Know, even my most junior aide even thought that you would be stupid enough. To okay, ask I know she does. Stat. But it's it's her manner. She's she stopped getting excited and she comes across as, as though she's important, which is weird. She's always on new drugs, medications, changed or something. No, she's doing well at the inquiry, isn't she? So that's going to boost her confidence. Uh, maybe. Um, so I'll ask her a question today. 
No. Ah, now that's an interesting story. Apparently, um, the Politics Live BBC show on uh, BBC Two, is it? Yeah. In the mornings, weekday mornings, apparently, uh, it's been two years since they've had an MSP on. Uh, and all of a sudden, they had an MSP on this week on the show, and it was Anna Sarwar. <laughs> My God. Safety. It shows you what, what, it's safe to assume then that BBC Scotland have decided who, Pick their winner. Is, who is their horse in a two horse race. Eh? Uh, I'd like to see Monica Lennon get it. Um, I think she's got too much baggage, mate. I think there's, there's, there's stuff in her past that is unresolved, she, shall we say. If she's got too much baggage, how, what about Salas? He must Ken have mate, a couple of train loads. I, I, but he, he has, mate, but he's got enough money to buy off enough votes to, for people to forget about his baggage. But, I mean, the policy, you know what the policy for Labour is going to be like, so it's all good for the independence if Sarwar wins. Phil? Sarwar's got, well, I'm just looking at the affiliate nominations. Uh, Sarwar got all the right-wingers. Surprise, surprise. Um, and Monica got all the left-wingers. What uh, was the big union that Monica got this week? She's got two. Oh, she's she's got, got Unison and Unite. She's got Unite, Unison, CWU, uh, Socialist Health Association. How can all these left-wing trade unions be back in a right-wing or centre-right-wing candidate? Why do they not just um, no bother to back either oh, one? No, 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 really? Unions he's got. He's got Asdor, GMB. Surprise, surprise there. And this is a surprise. When I just mentioned 1984, she's got the NUM. <laughs> I didn't know they still existed. Oh, 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 I said there were six, possibly seven, um, digging about somewhere out in West Lothian in the coal pit. I was say, what's, what's an NUM branch meeting like these days? Yeah, they meet around exactly. the pool table at bloody the bowlers. I'm yeah, really uh, surprised at that. I mean, so well, that's not the overwhelming. There are still these open cast mines around, aren't there? Yeah. Ah, there would still be guys looking after the museums. Mm. I'm not even going to laugh at that. I've, oh. I've said it and thought, that's not going to get a laugh. Yeah, that's really... <laughs> um, Although it's a, it, it genuinely is a nice place to visit. We should say to our uh, listeners and viewers, if you're ever in Newton, yeah. Newton Grange, do go and visit yeah. the old Queen Victoria Colliery. It's cracking. Yeah, it's a good yeah. place. Not yeah. only that, Knitting itself as a village is absolutely uh, it's, it's beautiful. Lovely, a lovely village. It's uh, the, yeah, the whole area is really nice. And the rumor that they've all got six T's absolutely positively is not true. No, they've got seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but on each foot. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, one of those strange things about the minor strike was it was quite good fun if you were of an age. Well, anyway, did we, did we have a, a family? A big, a, a big shout out to Black Diamond Radio. Uh, well, I was just going to say it was quite good fun. If you didn't have a family, uh, you were still living with your parents, so you didn't have to pay rent, and your mammy fed you. If none of those things applied, it was pretty terrible. Oh, good. Aye. Aye. I'm not going down that road. How dare you? Good friends of mine out there. Aye, well, I, I was on the picket line with them. I, not the miners, I meant the radio station. Oh, right. I was talking about the miners. I'm not too sure about the radio station. Did they not throw us off air? Uh, well, oh. we were being a bit political and uh, they were nervous. Jimmy's, Jimmy's signing that I should cut your head off, Stuart. No, I'm signing that it's time to go. Right. Uh, and we'll do exactly that. I think. We'll do exactly that. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks, you. Jimmy. Uh, thanks for me, folks. And thanks for listening. And we'll catch you all on... Hat Friday. Just about oh, to last. Oh, dear. Cheers. Bonnet day. <laughs>